Hi guys, I'm Kyle Williams. We're here at Grindhouse Tattoo Productions and today I'm going to show you how to tattoo black and grey horror. Let's get into it. Right guys, here we go. So I'm just going to apply some stencil stuff to the skin. I have sanitised the area, it's all shaved. Um, so I'm just going to rub on a good amount. Make sure the stencil sticks well throughout the whole process. I intend to keep everything quite simple. Um, like years ago, like I don't know, maybe like eight years ago, I'd probably like have lines everywhere all over this piece. But now I intend to just look at the photo and just sort of work by eye. So I kind of just keep the shapes very simple, just a few lines here and there. Just kind of works easier for me, really. So if you just stand a bit straight for me. There you go. Me without pushing your client over, as it can happen. <laughs> so this is what we're going to be working on today, guys. Screen mask. So once the stencil's on, guys, and it's got a little bit of wetness to it. I intend just to get a bit of kitchen roll and I just hold it to the skin without rubbing it obviously otherwise you're going to smudge the stencil and then as you pull it away you're going to get the excess of the, the thermal on it and then once it's all done on there ask your client to sit down for 10 minutes let it dry a little bit more and then that way then through your process it's not going to be stressful and losing any of the stencil and stuff so, so I'm just about to start the tattoo now guys uh, stencil's on super dry uh, I've put a tiny little coat of hustle butter over the leg just so I, I just feel like sometimes it really locks in the stencil but also uh, it just stays and keeps the, uh, the skin quite moisture throughout the whole tattoo. Um, so I'm uh, using a Cheyenne 3.5 uh, Unlimited Wireless. Uh, this is a really good all-rounder machine. It's good for putting in blacks, it's good for line work, it's nice for smooth shades. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to start now and uh, I'm going to start off doing, I put a little few uh, skin breaks for this tattoo. Um, so I'm just going to start lining these in. Uh, I'm going to use a, a dark grey wash just to sort of sketch them in. Again, these don't have to be super perfect, they're just a guide of where you're going to go from. So for doing black saturation, I use a 23 Cheyenne craft cartridge and it's a 0.35 curved mag. Uh, I really like this, this needle, I've been using it for so long now and everything with it seems to heal amazing as well. I think it's once you start using specific needles and you start getting the results that you want, it's, you know, you kind of, that's your system then. And I've been using these for so long and they're just such an amazing needle. So I'm going to go in now and start doing some black. I intend to do like, I don't do circles, I do like oval motions. So an easy way to remember is just do it like an egg. Yeah, and uh, it just goes in like a dream. So, with my, the voltage of the machine, it's a funny one with the Shane Unlimited because it all goes by sound. So if this is like the highest 12, I intend to have it up there. So maybe it's like, maybe like nine or 10 volts. Um, I don't intend to change it too much. Uh, I change it if I'm using textures or anything like that. If I'm doing textures with a round shader, I'll intend to bring it down to about 7 volts, 6 volts, just because it's like less trauma if I'm doing textures. Um, but yeah, I kind of keep it at one speed really. So like I said, I'm just going to be working around like this little skin break now, just to give the tattoo a little bit of flair, you know. So I intend to start on the bottom right side of a portrait, and this is for every portrait I do as well, um, just purely because the stencil. You know, I don't want the stencil rubbing out. I don't want uh, to be a mess in case I get some sort of like ink spillage or anything like that. 
it just keeps the stencil really clean um, and that's why I always start on the bottom right I'll usually kind of like work bottom right kind of up a little bit and then I'll start going like to the left and then upwards just avoiding as much as I can like over the fresh peas so if I'm ever doing lines like this and I'm like going straight up towards black I'll intend to get as close as I can and then I'll pull out like a seven round shader and then I'll just get in there and just get really tight against the lines and then so it's super solid against it you know so now I'm using a the Killer Ink Stella uh, needles uh, I think I've been through quite a lot of round shaders in my time but I just I've been using this one for so long I just absolutely love it super sharp goes in like butter so right now I'm just gonna go against this line so now I've switched to a seven round shader uh, and I'll intend to use this for specifically for like for textures or if I'm want to get really really tight against the line I'll uh, I'll get next to it start doing the round shader but then I'll start brushing into the black that I've already created with the mag just so it blends in because you got to remember these can cause quite a lot of trauma so if you go in specifically against it you might get like a line against it when it heals um, but yeah if you take down your needle depth a little bit and just really just be really gentle with it you'll uh, you'll blend it into that to the mag that you've already created towards the line as you can see here So again, just saturating the blacks, just making sure these are super solid before we move anywhere. Still using that 23 curved mag, shading craft cartridge. I've always been into black work and I've been working around some amazing black work artists, which has always helped me on my journey of how to like really saturate good blacks and getting them perfect heels. So I've been quite fortunate really to be to be working with some of the best. Also, don't be scared to like hang out a little bit as well, you know, when you're putting your blacks in. I think that's like a big problem of people when they ask me about putting black in there, they're not hanging out enough and they're not like, they're too scared to put it in, you know? Um, but you know, once you find that right balance of how to put it in without causing the trauma to the skin, it becomes pretty second to none, you know. Uh, so right now, I'm just sort of like round shadering around the mask. I'll try and avoid using as many hard edges as I can, just because I want to get that really soft look with everything for when it heals. I want it just to be like more of a natural look rather than just so solid. Um, it can also change the look of the realism as well if you put too many lines in there. So yeah, another little technique that I do guys is that I intend to pat the tattoo rather than like keep on washing it, rubbing it. Um, I just feel like again, this causes way less trauma to the skin and will also benefit your healing. So again, I'm just gonna go keep going back into the blacks now make sure they're super super solid but there might be times when I'm like up here in the tattoo and I'll be looking down here I'll be like oh maybe we can do a little bit more black down here and then we will go back in and put the client through so much hell <laughs> So I've just changed back to my round shader again, just so I can get right against. So if I'm doing the knife now here, I'll intend to just sort of like, instead of doing like a clean line, I'll just sort of like sketch it in, you know? I just feel like it just looks better when things heal. Um, and again, if I need to get in any little tight areas, I feel like the seven round shader is such an important needle to use. It's like you have to use them through every tattoo. 
if it's not a seven seven round shader you got to use a five round shader it's just for me it's it's i don't know i wouldn't be able to tattoo without a seven round shader you know i know a lot of people who intend to use liners for using the jobs of a of a shit or brown shader but you you know all you're doing is causing so much trauma to the skin and especially getting all those hard lines in at a heel tattoo it just looks not the best um, so these needles just make sure that you use your seven round shaders and your five round shaders because they're just such an important needle so I'm just gonna usually what I'll do as well if I'm going to start moving on to certain areas and I do think the stencil might be in a position where it might get a little bit rubbed away or a little bit messy I'll just put in some little rough lines just so I can go back into it and make sure I know where the, the stencil is going to be just so we get a little bit of a nice little line in there again I don't want to saturate it too too much because I don't want it to be a solid solid line you know so that'll do there now so now I'm just going to put in a few little grey, a few little greys in the side of the mask. What I intend to do as well, I kind of sort of put down a little bit of a foundation first, just so I can sort of see how the piece looks and then I'll go back in, I'll put in all my darker tones and where things need to be, all the values, just to make it come to life. So now I'm just going to be going around the mouth, but like I said earlier, just going to sketch it in. You know, you got to remember as well, everyone's style is very different, you know. This is purely just how I tattoo. And this is how I enjoy it, you know. Uh, so now I've just switched to a size 30, 15 mag bug pin. And this is a Da Vinci, Bishop's Da Vinci needle. Uh, I really, really like these needles. They're super soft. Um, and yeah, they again, they don't feel like they cause any trauma to the skin. Uh, I've recently just switched up to these. So my needles, anyway, I use Quadrant, Bishops, and Killer Ink, and Cheyenne. Um, they're the kind of the three, uh, the four brands that I use. It is four, right? One, two, three, four, yeah, four brands. <laughs> I'm just like, how many did I just say? Um, so again, in the mouth now, just going to dip into a little bit of black. Going to start working the mouth area. You know, I know a lot of people who would intend to just mag this whole tattoo, you know, just to get that, you know, less lines the better. But for me, I do prefer to just sketch in a few little lines just so that it does hold a little bit when it heals and it just doesn't look too like washed out. Again, if you do a piece as well where you think that it looks a little bit too soft, then you can always go back in the end and tighten things out, seven liner, five liners. So right now for my, my gray wash, what I'm using, again, I'm using the, the world famous set. Um, again, heals amazing, super smooth. Really, really like this set. For my blacks, however, what I haven't quite got onto yet. I'm using Panthera Triple X. Hands down the best black on the market that you can get. So yeah, so uh, Panthera Triple X is definitely like, for me, the best brand to use. Uh, I've been using it now for a month, since however long I know. It's, it's definitely one of the, the best healing blacks out there. Um, again, sun damage, you know, sometimes you can see some blacks. I can, I can always tell what somebody's used um, on somebody's skin. It's, uh, you know, stuff what's like a drawing ink. They intend to like heal very blue over time or they go like a really weird gray. Okay, I'm just switching back to a 23 now, just so I can just fill in the rest of this mouth. Anything that's like big saturation, big black areas, I'll always use a 23 mag. Again, I've got a highlight in the middle of the mouth here, so I'm gonna go from black all the way down and then fade into this little highlight.
Again, now here's a perfect example of what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna switch to my seven round shader, just for like little areas like this, where I've done like a little great little gray line. And I get my blacks now, and I get quite tight to it, and just really sort of get, start pushing them blacks back into where I've shaded to. Um, show you now. This area here is so important for when we put white in at the end. You'll see that later on. I'll talk about it later on when I get to it, like the highlights and stuff. But just making sure all these little bits are solid, you know? Like I said, you might wipe down, see some little areas that need to go back in. Just make sure it's super solid because the blacks are the most important, man. There's like, as soon as a tattoo comes back and it's not solid and it's patchy, it's like, oh man, like, it definitely throws off the tattoo and the look, you know? So just making sure them one pass blacks are just in there. Um, so I'm gonna switch now to a, uh, a Da Vinci Bishops uh, 13 mag, and this is a bug pin again. I use bug pin, well, to be honest with you, again, like I said, I've recently only just switched to Bishops, but bug pins, if you wanna get those smoother shades, highly recommend trying them out. A, this is a size, I think it's an 11 bug pin. 11 bishops bug pin. So with 11 bug pin, I'll intend to use it for smaller areas. If I'm doing things like around eyes, little textures. Um, 13s might usually go to, but bishops don't unfortunately do a, a 13 mag in, in a bug pin. So, the 11 will have to do. <laughs> so I'm just gonna just keep on brushing, just keep on changing and make sure my needle depth's the right as well. So when I, when I intend to shade, I do pull it back a lot more than I would when I'm saturating black, just because you really just wanna tickle the skin. You know, I'm a very back and forth motion when it comes to doing shading. Yeah, so I think my favorite part of the process of the tattoo is definitely when I've got down the whole base and the foundation of the piece and I can look at it, I can see all the shapes in there, and then I can go back in then and put in all the darker tones. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like, once I got to that part, I'm like very comfortable then. But in the process, you know, it's kind of just like getting everything mapped in, making sure that it's all saturated and I'm really happy with it. Sometimes you'll find that wherever you tattoo on the body, for instance, right now I'm tattooing on the ankle. So you have to make sure that sometimes I'll go in and I'll feel like even though I'm not hanging out that much, you'll still feel the needle that it needs to go in a little bit more just because of the area. I'm constantly looking back and forth off my reference as well. Just making sure that it's whatever I'm doing is what I see. Uh, this now I'm using the seven round shader again. I'm just gonna put in a few little lines for the hood. Just some like little harder edges where the shadow's coming off underneath. Back to my bug pin, just because I'm going back into the face again now. Just gonna start creating some shapes again. Like I said, I'm just gonna map out some basic values in this piece, just so I can get it all mapped in there and then I can go back into it once it's all on. When I'm shading, I intend to do a back and forth motion. Um, I know a lot of people do things very differently. Some people intend to do like the little seesaw. Me, I kind of like to go forward and then smoothing it out. Um, everybody's different. Again, it's about finding your own feet with it and it will just come naturally. But the seesaw one is such a, you know, something that you'll see a lot of artists doing just to get them smooth shades. Uh, but it just depends on your style as well. Uh, if you want to go for that softer look, if you want to go for that little bit more aggressive look where it has a little bit more peppering in your work, um, yeah, just intend to sort of like saturate the skin and go forward. If you want that smoother look, just go back and forth, be so. Or people cross hatch as well, go one way, go back the other way.
So yeah, when I'm doing my shading and stuff, I don't intend to apply too much pressure to the skin, just because I feel like the lighter it is, the more softer it's gonna go in the skin. If you wanna saturate that a little bit more, go in that little bit more deeper or push in a little bit more deeper. But as far as like, you know, the, the shading and stuff, I intend to just be as light as I can on the hand, literally like a feather. That always dabbing the, the, the ink will always help you with your stencil and stuff, just to like prevent it from rubbing off. Um, again, like if you're green soaping the skin all the time, then the stencil is always going to come off. And as a beginner tattooer, I don't recommend it because it's going to cause a lot of stress during the process. And uh, you want to be as comfortable as you are through start to finish. As you can see, guys, every time I go in my greys, constantly patting, trying to cause as less trauma to the skin as possible, always applying hustle butter make sure that skin's super smooth and uh, and yeah I mean I'll only intend to use green soap if there's a big mess on the skin um, but in this case because I'm only doing some like light greys I intend to just dab 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 all the time uh, and you can see already I've been on this piece for a while now and the stencil's still there uh, and it just definitely causes less stress to especially for beginners when they're doing portrait work So right now I'm just gonna just do like a tiny little shadow underneath this eye. Again, just using a very, very light wash, using the edge of my mag just to map it in ready for later. I'm gonna put in my darker tones and just getting the shape of it. Again, guys, there's like there's probably stuff on here what you can't see that I'm kind of just working off my photo. Um, it's kind of just the way I work. I kind of just have basic shapes in on my stencil. And then I just sort of just use my eye to create the shapes you gotta remember as well guys like you know this is your tattoo like it doesn't this is going to be your style you know it doesn't have to be exactly like the photo you know you know if this is your take on it um that's what i love about tattooing is that we all have our own style and it doesn't have to be the same as everybody else's you know you just have fun with it so I've now just switched back to my seven round shader and I'm just gonna, as you can see, some of the stencil starting to go on a little bit of the knife. So I'm literally just gonna just shape in just a tiny few little lines, just scratch them in. So for this bit guys, I'm just gonna switch to my 11 bug pin, my bishops. And I'm just gonna just get underneath this eye here and just create this little highlight shadow and yeah just a little reminder guys that just remember how important it is so when you're when you are going in when you're using a needle which is when you're using a lot of black in there just to make sure that you're always rinsing off um all the excess black before you dip in it in any other light inks because you don't want it to um start mixing in there and your mid-tones start going into dark tones and vice versa because it can easily happen even with the smallest tiny little bit because especially with the Panthera Triple X that I'm using, it's so strong that, you know, you put that in a tiny little bit of, you know, a light wash and it's instantly just, boom, changed, you know? So now, guys, I'm going to be changing to my Quadrant, and this is a size 30, 13 Soft Edge Magnum. Uh, this isn't a bug pin, so this is just purely just for when I'm getting into some like really solid black tight areas that I can saturate the, saturate the skin solid. Uh, with a bug pin, you find that it's because it's so soft, it doesn't. I mean, you can you can you can 
saturate with a bug pin, but it's just a little bit longer and again, it's a little bit traumatic for the skin. So I'm gonna go in here now and just start putting in some blacks. So guys, I'm going to go into this hood now, start creating the folds first, where all the darker areas are. So I'm going to put in some black here, and then what I'm going to do then, I'm going to get out a round shader, and I'm going to start doing some textures. So this is where it starts getting a little bit fun. I've just changed to my 23 again, just because there's a little bit of a bigger area for my black. So again, just to make my life easier, just to make it a little bit quicker, we switched to a bigger needle, where prior this one I was using a 15 mag. So what I'm going to do now guys that I once I start working in the hood and stuff I'm going to go in with my seven round shader and I'm going to go in with my mid-tone and I'm just going to start creating some little textures just so later on we can go in with some little whites and then we can make it look like little glistens so I'm going to do I'm just literally making like little circles so it kind of be like the little cotton for the hood and what I intend to do, if I go in with a lighter shade and it does need to be boosted up, I will go back in then with a darker tone and vice versa. If I need to go darker again, I'll go in with the black. But I just want to create some little tiny textures so when I put the white in, the white holds against the little, like the little circles, you know? You'll kind of understand when you see it on the final, when it's finished, how it looks. So I'm using the seven round shader again. This is kind of like my texture and my kind of tight. If I want to get anything tight in with blacks or anything like that, I will use this specifically for just that. I don't intend to use liners for like doing anything what's going to be too traumatic for the skin. If you want to do a nice clean line, use a liner. Uh, but in my case, I intend to like to use a round shader, seven round shader, seven or five round shader. It's like, it just comes down to preference really. And again, I'm just creating some little shapes here. And then what I'll do then, I'll go over with some shading in a bit. So where I've been pushing out the black on the sides to create the folds, I'm now gonna go into a darker shade and I'm gonna just keep pushing up just to get soften out that black. And this is gonna go into this fold here. So one of the nice features I like about the Cheyenne Unlimited is definitely the disposable tips. Um, they come in so many different sizes and I always like to make sure that hygiene is first when it comes to my clients. And just being able just to be able to buy these so easy off Killer Ink as well um, is definitely something that I just really love about this machine. I never use the, um, like the metal tip, what it comes with. Always use a brand new uh, disposable tip every time. So all I'm doing here guys, I'm just building up these textures inside the hood, um, starting off with the lighter shade first, like my medium, and then I'm going in, and I'm just going in with darker, darker values, and then, uh, then I'll use some black then, just to create texture. I am using the Yarsen World Famous inks, um, again, all World Famous inks are great, highly recommend if you're a beginner. Like this, this ink set might be a little bit too dark for you, but if you want to try the, the six gray wash, there's like a set of six, which I highly recommend as well. It comes with like a, a, an ink solution where, you know, you can break down the inks as well, um, which is again, a very, very cool ink set, which a lot of my friends still use to this day. And again, it heals super, super clean, super pearly, opaque looking. 
Um, and yeah, give it a go, give it a go. Personally, I know this mask very well and I know how the mask looks. So I know even though the contrast is so high and even when you can take an image sometimes, sometimes you won't see things what are in the mask, what you know are there. So I know in the side, inside the eye here, there is a, there's like a black seam. And then there's like, so there'll be like a little bit of a break in between the eye socket and then the, the fabric. And the same on this side as well. <clears throat> So I'm gonna put those in. I know you guys can't see it, but I know it's there and it will definitely give the tattoo a little bit more values in it as well. So yeah, uh, it's, just, it's just about having fun with it and just being artistic with it and just trying to put as many elements in there as you can. Um, and this being one of them, uh, which will definitely just make it pop a little bit. And again, guys, um, just make sure the skin's nice and tight. As we're getting a little bit further up the leg, it's not like tattooing the ankle where the skin's like super tight. So you've got to just give it a little bit of a stretch just to make sure that we are getting them blacks in there nice and solid. Okay, and now I'm going to switch back to my 23 mag. This is the 23 3.5 Cheyenne. Uh, when I'm doing eyes and doing like small areas, like I said before, I'll saturate the skin in the bigger areas. I'll go back into my seven round shader. And then I'll go in and then I'll start saturating from the lines. This is just like, this is just something that I've done for a long time. Just purely because I feel like when you mag it, it's just not, it's not as clean. And again, you can tighten up the line. Once you know how to use a round shader, it's the best tool for me personally when it comes to doing portraits. It's just like, I don't know, it, you can do everything with it. going inside this little tiny bit of the eye now. I'm gonna switch up to a 11 mag just because it's perfect size to get inside this tiny little gap. I wouldn't wanna be using like a 15 or something because the 15 is gonna be too big. So I'm literally just using a smaller needle grouping just so I can really get in there nice and tight. Right guys, I'm gonna now change to a seven round shader and then start putting some lines in around the nose area so I can then, you know, inside the actual reference that I'm using, this piece is actually solid black, but I am gonna leave a tiny little line here as I know in the mask, there's a little highlight inside there. So I'm gonna just do like a tiny little, tiny little line here. So right now guys, I'm going to be creating a tiny little shadow underneath the left side of the eye, just where the light source is creating the shadow, making sure that I leave a tiny little gap underneath that and the black, just like that. So then when I put the black against it, then you'll be able to see the nice little shadow. 
I might brush a tiny, tiny little bit of white in it later just to pop it out and it'll lift it off against the black, you know? Again, I'm using a 11 mag just because it's a smaller area. And I'm really making sure that everything's precise. So now I'm going to be going into the side of the face here now. So I'm going to be putting some black in there. I'm going to turn my machine up again to about there. I think it's about 10 volts. It's really hard for me to say what actual voltage it is. Um, just making sure my needle depth's right. I intend to hang out roughly around like a two pence, I reckon. You know, any more than that, you don't want to be causing too much trauma. So about a 2p, but don't be scared. You'll always kind of know if you've going in like too much and then you just rein it in, you know? Again, like I said earlier though, depending on where about it is on the body, you know, like if it's on an ankle area, it's so thin that you don't want to hang out too much because the trauma from the needle is just going to start cutting the skin open. So what I'm going to do now, I've just got in, dipped into my black going against all the areas what I need tightening out, like I said earlier. And I'm repeating a lot what I'm doing, you know, like from the piece from earlier. Kind of just getting in, making it super tight. So I've just switched then to, an, to again, back to my 23. I'm going to start saturating these big areas of black now. Hang out a little bit more. I can feel it that it needs to be out a little bit more. And again, like I said, we're going to go in, saturating big circles, oval shapes. Good five seconds, keep moving. Move again. Make sure that wrist is really fluid as well, not so stiff, you know. I'm going to just be doing a little line around the face of the mask and then a little bit harder edge around here. And again, uh, like I explained earlier about the inside of the mask, I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. So as you can see on this side where I've left this line, that's where I'm going to just get a mag later on. I'm just going to brush in a little bit of white maybe use a liner dependent on how i feel um again guys this is like i feel like with tattooing i'm constantly like yeah so right now guys i've switched my needle back to a 23 and i am gonna be saturating the eye again uh solid black just try and think as my 23 is just like my blackout needle basically um that's kind of like the one that saturates the black the best. Again, anybody out there who wants to saturate some really nice clean black. I know a lot of people are using like the big mags at the moment, like the 49s and the 28s. But for me personally, if you take your time and saturate the skin with the 23, it's for me, I don't know, it's, it's the perfect needle. Um, I definitely highly recommend trying these craft cartridges because they're just so beautiful to use. Super smooth. I've never shaded with them. I've kind of like used them to have my black and push out my blacks into some greys, but I've never used it, ever used them like a face or nothing like that. Um, so I don't know what they're like. They could be amazing. Um, no doubt they probably are. I never really know what I'm going to use until I get onto the, the, the actual bit, you know, so I could say like I'm going to use a mag for that bit, but maybe I might use a round shader. It just depends on when I when it comes to it. And I'm, how I feel, what's going to be the best to use. I'm just switching back to a seven round shader now. Again, getting in like these little tight areas around the inside of the socket of the eye. Always looking back and forth at my reference as well, making sure that I'm not doing anything I shouldn't be doing. If you're doing a horror portrait, and like I said before, whether you're trying to get it super, super smooth, 
or whether you're trying to get a little bit of texture in it, depending on what size of needle grouping you're going to use. For me, like I said, I intend to use bug pins because I don't want to have too much grain in there. But if you're using, if it depends, you know, you might like use a really cool like Halloween reference where in the photo it might be a tiny bit grainy and you might want to be like, right, okay, well, I don't want to get this super smooth. I want to get a little bit of texture with it. So I won't use a bug pin and you'll just use like a curved mag or anything like that. So there's, there's so many ways that you can make a piece look so different by just changing the needle uh, size or the grouping. But as time goes on and the more portraits you do and the more contrast you want to use, the more confident you're going to get. And that's when you're going to be like, right, well, I know what I'm going to put in here. I know what I'm going to put in there. But it's just being confident with it, you know, but also just like looking at your reference as well. Like if, if there's something on your reference, what looks dark, put the darker tone in, you know, if it's because you one thing you don't want to do as well, which I kind of used to do back in the day when I was first when I was too scared to put in like blacks and stuff, you know, when you are putting in too many, when you're starting to put in like your light tones, your mid tones, your dark tones, one thing you don't want to do is start overworking the skin. And that can easily be done from building up your inks. Um, so yeah, it's just, uh, just try and just be confident with it and just try and have a good plan before you start the tattoo, you know? I'm going to use, switch to a little bit more of a darker grey wash in a minute. I don't want to use too much black. Like I said, like, it's always good to, if you're unsure of like how dark you want to go, just build it up, you know, like go into your, your darker tones. And then if you want to put black in, put black in. But if you're not too confident, just build it up all the time. It's, um, it's the best way to do it because once you put that black in, there's no turning back. Uh, one thing I would definitely consider as well guys is like making sure like the background and the foreground isn't the same like too much contrast in the back too much contrast in the face because i also i also like tattoos to breathe you know and when there's too much black in there it just looks too muddy and a little bit like Ugh, i don't know it just doesn't for me it doesn't work for me uh, i know there's a lot of people out there who like to do it but i don't know i like i like balance so in terms of making portraits on the horror side, um, I was always inspired by the Universal Monsters movies uh, growing up. So high contrast for me is definitely important for my style um, as it's what I grew up watching. Creature from Black Lagoon was one of my favorite movies and I just love all the photography from all these films. They're just so beautiful. So that's where it all kind of started for me. Like even when I did my first portrait, it was like, it might have even been a Frankenstein monster and I was just like, oh man, this is definitely what I want to be doing. Um, and yeah, so when I first started doing portraits and stuff, I used to use Photoshop and I used to burn all my images. But now in what I intend to do, I use Procreate and I create different layers. I'll get a photo, layer it, layer it, layer it. But like use all the curves, get the blacks up, erase all the stuff I want to do and I'll just play with all the different tones. Um, and I think it's really important if you want to get like a really cool look. But with my style in particular, I intend to use a lot of black on the outside of my work. And then kind of like, it's kind of how I get the look of like, you know, foreground, background. Um, and I love, I love that, you know, 
having like the really dark background, really like kind of light, light image and uh, just the contrast works so well. And that's where I kind of got my inspiration from, uh, from when I first started. It's all right. Sometimes I feel like I'm not making sense. Now you're speaking really clearly. God, oh Jesus. So I'm just switching to a five liner now guys. Just gonna put in a few little lines around the top of the head. Uh, so guys, I'm now doing some textures, just again for the fabric, just like I've done on the back side of the piece. Um, just going to create some little bit of texture, so when the, at the end when we put a shade through, we can put then some little tiny little white highlights in, and it'll just give it some little glisten. Again, I might just brush in a little bit of black into this other piece here, just so when it doesn't look too disconnected. You know, this hood is kind of like, it doesn't have to be too perfect either, like with your blacks being against it, because I'm probably going to put in some very dark tones in it later, so it's going to look probably, it won't really matter. I'm still going to try and get quite tight with it. So again, I'm running 
my machine around, I think it's about eight volts, I reckon, for doing textures, especially like using a round shader. It's always good to go that little bit softer so you don't cause any, any problems to the skin because you gotta remember these are very sharp needles so you don't wanna be causing any trauma to the skin. Um, And what I intend to do guys is that when I was doing like these little small textures earlier with the round shader, I get like either dip into like my black and just give it a quick little blast over or I'll go into a darker tone and just like feather it into it just so like it gets rid of like so much of the hard edges of the pieces of the lines and the like the textures I've created but also you can go in there I'm putting like little tiny little white dots in like these tiny little areas here and it really really looks cool when it's finished. So guys, right now, I'm kind of just having fun with this piece now. Going in, doing my own little thing on the knife. Um, doing whatever I kind of want to do really. Creating a little bit of blood, but also leaving some areas where we can put some white highlights, which is going to be quite important for the end of the knife. A little bit of a glisten against the black. I'm just going to dip into a little bit of my white. I'm going to start around the edges of the eyes. 
rubbing in the hustle butter. I'm going to start here. Sometimes I don't intend to like doing straight lines. I intend to be quite messy with it just because it looks a little bit more natural, a bit, a bit jagged, a um, bit disconnected actually, that's the word I want to use, um, rather than doing like a hard clean edge because sometimes it just looks too, meh, not too keen on like hard edges so I get a little bit bouncy with it. The same on this side of the eye. Yeah, pop them out. And again, like I said earlier, about inside the eyes, literally just gonna stipple it in. That's the little bit that I marked out earlier that I was telling you about. And then when you do those, it makes a huge difference in the piece. I love depth. Right, let's just switch back to my seven round sh shader. Revan's seven round shader, guys. I'm just going to do some little textures now inside the hood. Uh, this is the bit which is going to like really make the piece pop. Okay guys, so we've just literally just finished the tattoo now. I'm literally just gonna give it a little wipe down. Um, I'm gonna go through the aftercare with my client. Usually what I'd usually do is put Dermalize on the piece, but my client's got very, very sensitive skin. So we intend to just wrap it with cling film. Um, so I'm gonna now let my client sit down for five minutes, let it push out a little bit of the just a little bit of the blood, let it bleed out for five minutes, and then we're gonna get some really cool photos of the piece. So that's the tattoo done now, guys. We've just taken some really cool photos and videos. Uh, unfortunately, my client can't use any derm uh, dermalize, so we've just put some hustle butter on it for now, and we're gonna go old school and use some cling film. So now we're just gonna wrap up the tattoo. go literally having a fight with that then there you go put a little bit of tape on there and then it's good to go so guys that's the portrait i hope you really enjoyed the video i hope you got to learn some new techniques and i want to wish you all a happy halloween and i'll see you guys next time